And welcome back again, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode of the Lost Podcast of Titan, and we have missed you. Oh, dear <laughs> friends, have we missed you. You would not believe the past few weeks slash month, or however long it's been since we've actually recorded anything. But, oh my god, how are you doing? It feels like it's and been forever since we've talked. And we've heard, you know, your wails and lamentations throughout the land. <laughs> uh, been getting you know bugged to get the t-shirts set up teddy bears rolling out that's right bumper stickers uh it says fire photon torpedoes or uhura is going to cap your ass <laughs> there is no fucking jack the ripper scotty actually Ooh. did it <laughs> jesus is on board the uh starship enterprise <laughs> he's an ensign yeah or, uh, he's, he's like the equivalent of Barkley. He just, he can't quite actually, uh, do anything right. Which always kind of bugged me. About Barkley or about Jesus? Well, I mean, you know. But, uh, no, Barkley. Where, I mean, Wesley literally had to suck Jean-Luc Picard's dick. <laughs> just to get, like, a glance to get into Starfleet Academy. Like, they made it this huge thing. People wash out. There, there's tests that, you know, fuck with your mind. There's explosions and, and all kinds of trials and tribulations. And meanwhile, we have Barkley over here just like, hey, what's up? I can't do anything right. And I have somehow failed up into the Enterprise. I think they overemphasize his uh, nerdishness. Well, it wasn't nerdishness. He was incompetent. Well, uh, if he was totally incompetent, he wouldn't have come up with all those... Uh, Really great doodads he did. Really great doodads, yes. Well, it, it irked me that uh, in Voyager, uh -huh. Barkley had developed a system by which Starfleet could communicate with Voyager. They, they established a system, the Pathfinder Project, and he was still only a lieutenant. I thought, crap, that would have, for me, that would have rated at least a promotion to a captaincy. Mm hmm. But, uh, yeah, so we have, like, Wesley, who's just, who can barely, you know, get it, get any kind of recognition at all. He, he, uh, it's like a couple of seasons before he's even made an acting ensign. And even that doesn't guarantee placement within the Academy, the prestigious Academy. Uh, and then he became a god, and then he somehow came oh, back. Yeah. I don't know. I know, I sometimes, you know, he became the Silver Surfer. That's how I was thinking about it. He no, he retired as a Silver Surfer. He was back in uh, Starfleet when uh, from uh, what was it? Uh, Nemesis. Troy and yeah, Troy and uh, Riker's wedding. Yes. Right. Yeah. What fun. I, think that, <laughs> I, I yeah. Whatever happened to the Beta Z wedding tradition of being naked? I think they I think they mentioned offhand that they had a uh, another they had two ceremonies. Oh, and we got the PG-rated one. Of course we got the PG-rated one. Well, I'm, I'm with the part of Phantom that thinks that Wesley was still the Silver Surfer. He just happened to make an appearance uh, to kind of blend in because, you know, he was a friend of Riker and Troy. Mm. Well, anyway, enough about Wesley. We'll, we'll be dealing Parker. enough with him later. Oh, geez, I'm crying. Could, couldn't we like lose the coordinates too? <laughs> I mean, we—it's not like it's not like we could just skip the Wesley episodes in Star Trek: The Next Generation. <sighs> but today, ladies and gentlemen, we are back on Star Trek: The Original Series with an exciting episode called "That Which Survives," and the uh, the the description is so exciting. After Enterprise landing party members beam down to investigate a geologically interesting planet, their ship is hurled across the galaxy. Yes. So exciting. I mean, oh wow, another another geologically interesting planet. I mean, uh, would they even bother with a normal planet? So this, they, now of course, it's they're going to beam down to it if it's geologically interesting. That's their job. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, the, the person who's writing uh, the synopsis for these episodes probably had the same issue we had, where as soon as season three hits, they're like, "Holy shit, this is this is trash." <laughs> but, 
But anyway, go ahead, put us on pause, ladies and gentlemen, and come back to us when you're ready. Welcome back, and we'll go ahead and get started. Three, two, one, play. Dun, 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 dun. And that's what a geologically interesting planet looks like. A giant red rock. How wonderful. You wouldn't. Spock, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Take a second look. Oh. Approximately. So it's smaller but heavier. Really? So it's got a, you know, instead of an iron core, it's a, I don't know, what's heavier than iron? Gold? Uh, Ooh, there'd be a thought. Ooh. A planet with a golden core. Well, Jupiter is, some people theorize that Jupiter has a diamond core. No, Jupiter is just a ugly rock at the, uh, the base. I will say this. Uh, Jupiter ascending is a complete trash movie. Uh, but it had such interesting concepts. Like, if you ever get the chance, go ahead and watch it. There is a story there. There is a universe and a world that you can just sort of uh, wander around, and even though the story itself they're trying to say makes absolutely no sense. But their refinery on Jupiter, that yes. was just, oh, I wanted to yeah, hang nice. around there. Nice backstory. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can accept a bad movie if it has a good backstory. Oh, yeah. Up oh, too late. Dinner. Did anyone see a chick with bad makeup like 20 seconds ago? <laughs> It's not that bad. There we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Holy shit. What kind of set was that? Well, they were in Los Angeles when they were filming this. Maybe there was a tremor. <laughs> I don't know. Like that, that looks kind of dangerous. And this isn't in, you know, the, the halcyon days of osha uh safety regulations this is back in the 1960s like fuck it get it up in 20 minutes we got to go to lunch <laughs> dinner oh wait <laughs> wait a minute where's sulu did we see uh not sulu uh check off was check off on the bridge i don't think so that co they're calling that vegetation? Why is McCoy with them? Uh, it's standard procedure to have a medical officer on a way team. I can, I can, I can dig that. It doesn't always have to be McCoy. I, McCoy, come on now. And that's got to suck to be stranded on a planet. Yeah. Especially if you can't pick which planet you want to be uh, stuck on. Well, what planet would you be stuck on? Like, if you had to be stranded on a planet and you can't say uh, Earth. I can't say Earth. Oh... As a matter of fact, it can't be a, a Federation planet. Ha, ha, ha. It can't be a, f a Federation planet. You're really pushing uh, Romulus. Yeah, okay. I would have I would have chosen Romulus, too. It's just it's just a more interesting planet. Yeah. <sighs> Zoom. We're almost done with this, actually. We don't have that many episodes left. 
Yes, what will we do with all our time? <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll uh, start doing proper comment, uh, not commentaries, but uh, reviews of the animated series, which, you know, I'm looking forward to, even though it's uh, Funimation. <laughs> R- right now, it's looking better and better. <laughs> that which survives. Teleplay by Mr. Lucas. Directed by Wallerston. He got paid... Listen, he's trying to give an explanation. Why you got to be such a dick? I noticed with writing Captain Kirk, it's a very fine line between being the assertive captain and just being an asshole. It's kind of like uh, with Spock. There's a fine yeah. line between the knowledgeable Vulcan and then just being an asshole. Yeah. Doctor. Oh, that's right. He's been in the... Yeah. Uh, okay, hey. The guy who interned in the Vulcan Hospital. Yeah. He's got his SAG, his SAG card renewed for another year. All right. That's insurance right there. Uh, there's no uh, checkoff. Uh, the skinny mo- motherfucker. It's a lanky-ass motherfucker, yeah. Lanky-ass, sorry. Also, they have fucked up her sound. Like, everyone else is like speaking into the mic, basically, except her. Well, they're standing. They would have to lower the boom mic into full view for her voice to come through clearer. I guess. Has she been in anything else? Is this is this the famous character actress we should be aware of? Has she been in Gunsmoke or Bonanza? Hogan's I I, Heroes? I, I think I recall Lieutenant Rada before. Um, Charlie's Angels? Naomi Pollock. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, Hawaii Five-0? She, well, the Mod she was Squad? A native, she was a <laughs> Native American woman in the Paradise episode. She was uh, a Native American woman. Oh okay, that's God. how they're describing I forgot describing. about that episode. That's I how they're describing about her. That she was a co-founder of the Traveling Jewish Theater in San Francisco. Uh, the she was, she was uh, an op- gained fame as an opera singer. Her name is Naomi Pollock. Yeah. But she hasn't been in Mod Squad. She hasn't been in Mod Squad, no. Oh, well. Like I said, she was more of an opera singer... And uh, she was. How, do, how does an opera singer get to be in Star Trek? She, uh, I don't know, showed up in Roddenberry's office and threatened to sing. <laughs> she she agreed to work for a song. You should probably start. Yeah. I'm sure he's fantasized about it before, though. Who's ever writing this episode has not paid attention to the previous episodes or... Have only taken a cursory glance. This doesn't seem like Spock, Scotty, Kirk. I bet Chekhov took one look at that and went like, ah, fuck this shit. Well, John, no, John Meredith Lucas has uh, written t- several other... He wrote Journey to Babel, The Omega Glory. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, well good, oh, so a good one and a bad one. No clouds. Underground water. Wait. A plant parasite? Plant parasite? Okay, so he's going to die. Got it. Don't split up. Arthur Patanides, who just walked off, he's been in uh, Happy Days, The Odd Couple, The Wild Wait, Wild West, The Odd Happy Limits, Days. Was he the uh, Impossible? The uh, diner? No, he no, wasn't. The diner he owner. He wasn't Fonzie. No. No. <laughs> no. Sulu, what have we told you about speculating, et cetera, et cetera? Also, have you noticed that it's very rare when they go down on an away team that they never take supplies, emergency supplies? Well, one could say that they weren't expecting this to happen, but yeah, you're I'd right. I'd be paranoid. I paranoid uh, as hell. Like, give me, give me the... Uh, uh, the communication device that I can ping Starfleet in case you blow up. Give me a tent and a couple of weeks of survival rations, all that shit. You know, and Lord knows we've seen enough episodes oh, where yeah. they could have used that stuff. Like, I'm sorry, Captain. I'm not beaming, beaming down there. We we know what happened. You know, load up with a box of ramen noodles. I don't know. She She's could rock my world. Logical disturbance. Bam, bam. Yes, thank you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's good to be back. Woo! <laughs> Stay for the dinner show. Although his costumes go, uh, it's not uh, their best work here. I'm almost afraid to ask what she would do. Uh, to I like improve uh, whoever's uh, thing it is is to reveal as much leg as possible. <laughs> Lucky TM. So clearly she's the parasite. Uh actually she is <laughs> Lee Merriweather, former time former time tunnel technician, uh played Catwoman in the Batman movie. Oh, I heard that she didn't like that role. It was all over sou uh, sour milk. And she was a former Miss America. Can you America. ever truly be a former Miss America? Are you not forever a Miss America? I, that's a good point. It's like that's once right. a Marine, uh, always a Marine. Didn't we see these sparkly rocks before? I'm not really before? understanding why we have the sparkly rocks. I've been trying to figure it out. Well, we got to have something to hide behind so that when they, when Losira, when the woman approaches a victim, they don't automatically spot her from the way off. Well, yeah, but I mean, she had to be visible in order to touch Diamato and her other victims. But, I mean, uh, the set designer must have gotten the strange instructions. They're like, they want rocks, and they want us to spray paint glitter all over them. Uh, 
Hey, l l let's let's not be too hasty here. There are plenty what? of better ways to die. <laughs> I mean, he's being a regular Pollyanna. What the fuck? Is there a corpse already in there? Also, it I'm sorry, if that like phaser is firing at 8,000 degrees, uh, they're cooked right now. Yeah, a good point. I'd <laughs> the make barrel. the barrel a bit longer. <laughs> it's, it's like putting on sunglasses next to an atom bomb. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, just, it's just a little well, bright. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta protect your eyes. Future's so bright. Gotta wear well, see, I have a job waiting after my graduation, okay? And 50000 a year, it's going to buy a lot of beer. <laughs> and things are just looking great, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Down in the park where the mock men play, them, they play by numbers. Down in the park with a friend called Five. Dun, dun, dun. And there's and there's no sense in looking up at the sky because there's nothing up there. Zoom. God damn it! Shut the fuck up! Oh, please, go, oh my go God. away. Spock always says he never desired command role, but I can think of other reasons why he was never made a ship's captain. And the fact that he's just an asshole, for one. <laughs> and yet he no, becomes a no diplomat. No social skills. Yeah. Is his style like, if we, we, if we don't do what well, he says, he's going to stay here? Well, if you play a musical instrument long enough, it'll start making music. Okay, I can understand them gathering the rocks to form a kind of a grave, but how did they, they the write phaser. Diamato's name on that stone? Also, they're going to go a thousand light years in about eleven and a half hours. Yeah, this is another. We didn't think this. Yeah, it's like is it the Milky Way galaxy situation. only about a hundred light years across? Probably. No, we had this discussion once. The Milky Way galaxy is much larger than uh, it's. The Star Wars galaxy that's rather small. Oh. Those lights are really bright for some kind of instrument reading. Also, he's still checking the board. Only my makeup is important.
Yeah, okay, let's just talk to the total stranger instead of telling well, Mr. Scotter. There's a standing the order on the ship. If a, if a woman shows up with uh, exotic makeup and attire, then you have to, you know, play along. She is very beautiful. See, now I wonder what Chekhov was actually doing during this episode. He's in his quarters, just like, what's going on? I really like that. Someone effect. apparently nice learned something effect. new over the weekend. Holy shit. Where was this in the other episodes? Because, <laughs> like, up until now, it's maybe a flash of light, but then... The, the trick of, we'll just stop the uh, film, let the person walk off the camera, and then resume the film with a musical sting. Da-da! It's over 100,000 anyway, light Milky years. the Way, yes. uh, the stellar disk... It's 185 plus or minus 15 kilo light years, which means it's... Oh, I'm sure there are big. bigger galaxies. And I'm sure there are oh, horrors no. in between that we have yet to comprehend. Well, maybe if we'd had a fourth season of the original series, no, we'd have seen some of them. If it, it was going down in quality, I, I sincerely doubt it. <laughs> I mean, we, we were we we're veering into uh, SNL territory with uh, special effects and acting prowess here. Ah, uh, Wilga! Ah, uh, Wilga! Abandoned ship. This is a drill. This is not a drill. <laughs> this is a drill. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to sleep that close together. One of them. Right, they got to stay together. So, how far away was Voyager flung? Uh. The so other about a hundred. Okay. How side far of the galaxy was Voyager flung Star Trek. Let's see, seventy thousand light years. Yeah. Okay. Other side of yeah. All right. It's a delta. So it's alpha, beta, delta, gamma quadrants for the galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. Wonder why they skipped the epsilon ga uh, quadrant. No, if they had epsilon, it wouldn't be a quadrant. It'd be uh, uh, you'd be able to slice a the galaxy up into fifths. They'd slice alpha, the galaxy beta, into yeah, gamma, epsilon. delta, right. Epsilon. What about C? Well, so much for the distress beacon. If she was just able to walk up and uh, turn it off. Oh, I'm sure the captain wants to talk to her. <laughs> to learn this earth man thing called love <sighs> but you will you 
how does all right? All I'm right. not. I'm not trying to sound stupid here, but how does he know she's uh, a woman? Several context That's clues. Just because. <laughs> just, just because. <laughs> well, I mean, just because the creature has the appearance of a human female does not necessarily mean that it is a female. Why is she stopping now? All of a sudden. But she will anyway. Uh, who cares? Dinner. And when she comes back, she'll be for Captain Kirk. No, I'm busy taking... Oh, he was watching. See, she likes the way she. Oh, looks. I mean, he likes the way she looks. It's Sulu. Oh, I mean, it's Sulu. He doesn't have the best of uh, taste. Also, what is this he's been fucking with the entire episode? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, oh, that little device in his hand. The thing that used to be the remote control in Spock's brain, they kept that as sort of like a small calculator slash Have you seen Spock's mini brain? tricorder. Which one was yes. that one? <laughs> <laughs> that was the episode where the aliens took Spock's brain out of its body to power their. Oh, that's uh, right. It was in the. Oh, automation. yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, and then uh, Leonard Nimoy had to be, like, all stiff while he was walking. Yeah. But what is he using with it? What is he doing with it now? Checking his uh, answers. Oh, Jesus, not again. God! Because by the time he said that, it was, I mean, just... Uh. That yeah. machine on the wall behind Mr. Scott... That was the drinks dispenser from Space Station K-7 in the Trouble with Triples. And it, and it didn't Well, the clothing isn't alive. Well, that's true.
Because she's saving him for last. Well, it's, it's good to be the star. I don't think they the had that uh, option. If I recall, I, I don't really, I really recall that being uh, available um, in the next generation. Oh, that's true. Maybe they didn't uh, yeah. have that option in the original series. But they could jettison in the cells. Or they could also do the uh, separation for the saucer. Yeah. You just said the oper integrator was fused. Which is why we're using a magnetic probe. <laughs> He's like, oh, oh, you want to? Okay, go ahead. And what's he going to do with the answer uh, once he gets it and the Enterprise blows up anyway? I'm, I'm willing to suspect he believes that uh, it's all an illusion sort of thing. They're still under the influence of the Melkotians or even the Telosians. Kabloom! Oh wait, wait, was he the only one that had a phaser? Wait, wait, was he the only one that had a phaser? I don't know. Yeah, what about the phaser Sue was oh, using right, the shooter right. with? Find time to be wondering about that. Woo 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 woo. I hope that instrument was clean. I, I'm sure he's very mouth. worried about that. Keep working. Oh, Spock, you can shut the fuck up right now. Oh. oh. I, 
I'm sure being an engineer, Scotty can pretty much estimate time. And he needs to stop playing Fortnite on that uh, little like, game I board swear he just found the prop. He's like, oh, I remember this. This is now my fidget toy. While I wait for uh, my agent to get me uh, more work, because this, this show is going downhill really quickly. <laughs> well, keep in mind that before they found that, uh, Spock was using an aviator's slide rule to uh, do calculations. Behold the hydro spanner think I'm a bob. <laughs> Too late. I mean, <laughs> <sighs> do as I say, not do as I do. Warp 12. I should have brought sunglasses. His future ain't so bright. <laughs> Well, at the very least, they're getting closer to the planet more quickly. True. Da-da! You. Yes. That's what I thought. What a what a crappy villain! That she can only kill one person at a time and has to, you know, target them. Well, maybe she wasn't originally designed to be a weapon. Why are you playing with her? I know. Like, Nina, you can't get me. <laughs> neither, neither. It is only me. Tonight. Dinner. I wonder if the music is part of the effect or uh, was that just something they were throwing in? Oh, you think they hear the music every time she teleports out? Yeah. I doubt it. Oh, 
Oh, we okay, let's belabor that point a little bit more here. Good lord, this is a dull episode. Oh my god. Yes, let's, let's, we, right now I'd even uh, accept Spock's countdown. To... <laughs> uh, I'm actually hoping for some hippies to come out of nowhere and start <laughs> s- <laughs> singing. <laughs> yeah, we're going to Eden. Yeah. Do, 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 do. The do run, or, run, run. The do run, run. Or have Bud pop out. Good. Because you know this planet's core is made of gold. Yes. How fortuitous of you to arrive. I'd be happy to share some with you for some transportation off this planet. It's a simple misunderstanding with the locals. I'm sure you understand. Oh, and don't let the women touch you. <laughs> Quite against your normal repertoire, I understand, but only for a while. Yeah, I'd hate to interrupt you, Miss Bob, but we've only got 57 seconds. Well, at the very least, if he's wrong, he'll be the first to know. Yeah. I could build up a nice little video library on all the science fiction films and television episodes that solve the problem by reversing polarity. Polarity. There used to be a website uh, whenever there was uh, a movie or a TV show that had a uh, chalkboard with equations on it. It would grab the best clearest image and analyze it, see what was on it, whether it was actually real equations or, you know, junk. Kablu! Kabloom. Run in credits. Kabl- da, 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 da. <laughs> Series over, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) Oh, now we're in a discotheque. Yeah. Everybody grab a partner and dance. It's a disco. You don't need a partner to dance at a disco. 
a partner oh, finds you. Yeah, yeah, I just revealed how much time I've spent in a disco. I'm afraid I've never come down with boogie fever. The fuck kind of bullshit is this? She's not saying who she's come for, so they gotta try and determine who her target is. You. And then at the last moment, she faints and uh, hits McCoy and goes, It's Haha. McCoy, yeah. Like, I mean, this... <laughs> oh. I signed up on eHarmony. Well, you gotta fall asleep sometime. Oh dear. <laughs> well, I mean, what would you have done? Well, as the computer, I would have made more of them. What computer? This is a disco. One thing, that's not Spock. You would have been killed. Oh, Jesus. So now we have another dead race. Yeah. We'll just add it to the pile. Sometimes it seems like the Star Trek universe was a lot more interesting thousands or millions of years ago. Well, yeah, that's the prequel series I want to see. Or just make it another sci-fi series, but don't reveal that it's a prequel to the Star Trek series until, you know, the uh, tail end of the uh, series you're doing. Well, I wonder if you could use some of the names of some of the older cultures and would the people at Paramount pick up on it? Yeah. 
Yeah, huh? Well, so much for exploring the unusual planet. Really? Holy crap, this was a nothing burger episode. Oh my god. I know, I'm, I used to like this more than I thought I did, but I'm going to give it a C, a hard C. I'm going to give it a D, god damn it. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream. All right, so what are we doing? What's what's the next episode? Can we get a better episode next time? What do we got? What do we got? <laughs> the lights of Zatar. Oh, Lord. The Enterprise is on course to install new equipment on Memory Alpha, the central library storage for the Federation. Uh, it doesn't and, quite ring a bell. And Scotty's girlfriend gets possessed by energy beings. Oh, no. He has a girlfriend? Yeah. I thought he hated women. He had issues with women, but uh, maybe well, don't we all? Maybe uh, his Scotty's girlfriend was the kind of woman who liked being bonked on the head and uh, threatened and stuff like that. Yep. I'm taking I mean, a look at her now here. <laughs> Go, I Scotty. Do, I do know that uh, there were two authors to the episode, and one of them was. Uh, Sherry Lewis, who was a famed television puppeteer in the 1960s. Oh, did she do uh, Cold Hands, Warm Heart? No. She oh. did uh, Lamb Chop and uh, Hush Puppy and a lot of that's other... Not, okay, that's not a... I'm sorry. Sock puppets are not puppeteers, all right? She did a pretty good job. We that was used... white lederhosen and some cotton balls. Oh, my God. I mean, she had a, a popular long-running children's shows. Because it cost 30 bucks an episode, <laughs> okay? <laughs> she like, was very she was very nice. For 30 okay. bucks an episode, yes. <laughs> okay, so Cuckoo, Fran, and Ollie did it better, but um, I liked her. Uh, welcome to our Lamb Chop episode, ladies and gentlemen. Oh... <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I give it a, a D. This is just... Uh, I'd still rather watch this on the alternative factor, though. So there's at least that. <laughs> oh, but anyway. So anyway. next week, ladies and gentlemen, will be the Lights of Zatar. I hope you all enjoyed this, and we will catch you all again next time. And all of you behave. Bye-bye.